Karthik Ramakrishnan. I'm a professor of public policy at the University of California, Riverside. I also direct AAPIData.com, as well as other things like National Asian American Survey, and I'm a principal at CRW. So we started API Data in 2013, but before that, um, I was part of the National Asian American Survey. So this is something that we did in 2008, and that was the first nationally representative survey of Asian Americans. Uh, it was a telephone survey, we still do it. It's a telephone survey that we do. And unlike exit polls, where you're grabbing people coming out uh, of the voting booth, um, we do a telephone survey so we get voters as well as non-voters, citizens, US citizens as well as non-citizens. Um, and we did that in 2008. Uh, and it was very important for us to do that in 2008 because many of you may recall, um, that was the year in which uh, Hillary Clinton was running against Barack Obama for the Democratic nomination. And there was no good data on our community, um, but there were, there were exit polls that were done uh, in California and New York coming out of Super Tuesday. And what the exit polls showed was that Asian Americans were the racial group that gave the strongest levels of support for Hillary Clinton. So you would think that the kind of news headlines would say, what is it about Hillary Clinton that she's gotten so much Asian American support? Right. Why do Asian Americans love Hillary Clinton? Is it something about the Clintons that is a strong brand mm -hmm. among Asian Americans? But instead, you saw news headlines saying, why don't Asian Americans like Obama? Why don't Asians like black people? Right? So does Obama have an Asian problem? Right? And, they, and they just went on anecdotes. So they had the data point in terms of support among primary voters, but they had no re idea why, what was motivating the vote. No surveys existed. Mm -hmm. um, so they talked to so-called experts who talked about things like the Rodney King uh, beating and the, and the riots in, in LA. And, um, and so we thought, you know what, it's so important for us to make sure that we get data so that people are uh, making claims based on evidence and not just uh, anecdote. Yeah, so the 2008 survey was great. So first of all, we, we asked a question about how much commonality Asian Americans had with African Americans, with Latinos, and with whites to see if their vote in the primary might have something to do with race. Turns out it did, but it was actually a very small effect. Uh, so that was important to show. But that's just on the academic side. What we found was there was a ton of news interest. So we got a lot of news coverage. So I was interviewed on CNN. Uh, about the Asian American vote, and that just grew bigger in 2012. So in 2012, we saw even more interest with even bigger news organizations, and, and, and both mainstream as well as ethnic news organizations, interested in the findings that we had. And, that's at, and so it was after 2012 that we started API Data. We started the API Data project to make data more accessible to a wide variety of audiences. It actually started off the conversation between me and a journalist, a reporter for The Economist. So he had called me asking me about, um, uh, he wanted to know some information about the Vietnamese community in the US and also some data about Vietnamese in Orange County. And I said, oh, that's pretty simple. You just go to the fact finder, this is what you do. And he said, well, could, could you tell me about that? Because you know, I'd rather do this as an interview. And so I told him a few things and I said, well, there are other academics that you can speak to that can talk to you about these things. And then I realized that even though we have academic research, even though we have organizations like Advancing Justice, a um, APIA Health Forum, so many other organizations, national capacity that do reports on the Asian American community, mainstream society doesn't know about these organizations. These journalists don't know about these organizations and they still want to hear an academic voice to lend credibility to the data, to the kinds of issues that are being talked about. So we started off API Data to showcase all of the different research that is being done by academics, by nonprofit organizations, and then we started creating data tools. Um, and then finally, the, another major thing that we do is, is to produce infographics. So what we found is that even though organizations might spend a lot of time and produce 100-page reports, most people don't have time for that. Okay. And, what they, and they don't even have time for a two-page executive summary. They have time to look at a pretty picture, and you have about eight seconds to try to drill a, a, the important message you want them to read within that infographic. Okay. And so that's, what our specialty, that's one of our major specialties today. So who is using your data? 
you know, we find people all over the place using our data. I'm always very pleasantly surprised. Um, I'll have people who are at conferences in which they'll see our, our uh, in infographics uh, or, or, or slides being used, and we want that. Um, you know, so we have our API data logo on there, so, so they, get, they get credit for it. I mean, it's funny because sometimes people ask, can we have permission to include this include the slide and it's it, to me it's funny because we put it all on our website because we want it to be used um, so we find it used by consultants we find it used in uh, by professors um, we what about marketers? marketers yeah so the the real estate association uh, aria ended up using a lot of the data that we have in the reporting uh, that they do and um, and so we're just very happy uh, we find that it's used in so many different types of settings, and and even journalists. Journalists use it um, to help uh, pitch stories uh, and to make sense of, of stories. So, what are you hoping to achieve with the AAPI Data Project? So, it's uh, you know we have been fortunate. We've gotten funding over the years. Um, the 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 Wallace Culture Foundation has been a big supporter of it, and now we have enough resources to to have not only a graduate student researcher, uh, which we had from the beginning, but also an assistant director. So Alton Wang is the assistant director for API data, and that helps us do more community outreach. One of the challenges we face is that as more and more people know about us and the work that we do, we get more and more requests to go to events uh, and to produce customized looks at the data, um, and which is important. We want to do that work, but it does require more staffing capacity to do that. Um, so that's uh, that's where we are. Uh, we're also um, we've also produced collaborative work. So we did work with the Center for American Progress. We did a big report on the state of mm -hmm. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. We do surveys with API Vote mm -hmm. and AJC. Um, and most recently, I'm very excited. If you go to facts.apidata.com, we have a very dynamic and interactive uh, data tool. So if you want to find out. Uh, the top, uh, kind of the key facts say about the Vietnamese community. You just type Vietnamese and you click on different indicators and it pops up immediately. But you can also compare Vietnamese with up to two other groups. So you can compare, say, Vietnamese with Koreans, or Vietnamese versus the Asian average, or Vietnamese versus the U.S. average. And you're able to do all of that and it, it's all done in real time. So we're getting more and more sophisticated. Um, we more and more people are finding out about our work, and so we have uh, tech, uh, you know, I don't want to say tech geeks, but I guess I'll say <laughs> tech geeks. Uh, people who have experience working in places like Facebook, people who are computer science majors, who are excited about the possibilities, and so we're cooking up some new tools this summer. Uh, so I think that we want to keep trying to innovate in what we do. The community is so dynamic. So um, many people, when they think about Asian, they think only about the Chinese population, for example, or East Asian. But now, East Asians are a minority within the Asian American population because you have a very fast growing South Asian population. So not only Indians, but also Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. But you also have a very significant Southeast Asian population, including the Filipino population. And so it's so important that when we think about the Asian community, that we recognize the diversity. It's more true than ever. Um, and, and, and that's important to pay attention to. You're also seeing changes. I mean, so the Indian population has grown so dramatically in the last decade. It used to be that it was Chinese and Filipinos for the longest time. Those were the top two groups. Indians are now the second largest group. But if you weren't paying attention to the Asian American community, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. Uh, and so, that, and it's, so it's important from a marketing perspective. The Asian community is, is, is a moving target if, you, if you're thinking about groups that you want to target for, for messages. So it's, it's important to always pay attention to the latest data that is available um, because things do change. Um, there are other trends like the growth of the undocumented population. So many people when they think about the undocumented population, they only think about Latinos. Well, one of the data points that we not only found, but it was about framing it and packaging it. Um, so we, you can talk about the Asian undocumented, about one and a half million uh, Asians are undocumented. But if you put that in perspective, what that means is that one out of every seven Asian immigrants in this country is undocumented. 
when we tell people that, their eyes bulge because they, <laughs> they can't believe it, right? But it's so important because unlike in the Latino community, so many Asian undocumented, don't f they, they don't feel like they, their stories are being told. There's a lot of taboo, there's a lot of shame, and that has some negative consequences. So for example, when it came to DACA, which is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, we had the data in terms of the populations that were eligible, and there were sizable Chinese and Indian populations, as well as Korean populations and, and, other, and Filipino uh, populations that were eligible for DACA. There were so few Chinese DACA eligible people that applied um, that, that uh, USAIS wasn't even reporting it out for a while. And that, you know, that's unfortunate because having DACA can mean the difference between work, certainly work authorization and not, but in many places having access to health insurance, being able to drive. Um, so that's something that, you know, uh, hopefully our community also not just, so for us, it's not just about the data, but what you do with the data. It's data to help drive narrative, it's data to help drive awareness, and data to help drive policy change.